Hello, hello, and welcome to the Creative Writing Art Form Specific Webinar for GSA 2024. Um, as everybody's trickling in, we want to kind of get to know who is here. So if you could use the chat function to drop your name, your county, and if you've decided on what you're going to be for Halloween, go ahead and drop in your Halloween costume as well in the chat so we can see who all is here. Hi, Michaela from Jefferson County, going to be men in black with, with your friend. That's very exciting. Oops. Hi, Mia, also from Jefferson County. Mizuko Kamado, very cool. Ben Skipworth from Jefferson County. Hey, how are ya? Let's see. Oh, we've got Aubrey from Callaway County. It's going to be Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Hi, Mason from Oldham, Riley from Hardin. Gonna be the Mad Hatter. You could be the Mad Hatter to Aubrey's Alice. Hi, Iris from Madison County is gonna be Coraline. Let's see, Parker Lally from Elizabethtown. Hello, hello. Hi, Maya from Boone County. Great, awesome. Those sound like some great Halloween costumes. I'm still not decided on what I'm going to be for Halloween, but we will get there. Um, well, welcome to the Creative Writing Art for Specific webinar. We're so excited to have you. Um, I'm going to launch a super quick poll just to get a little bit more information about um, kind of who's in attendance with us today. We got your names, your counties, and your Halloween ideas. We are going to get a little bit more information from you. It's a super quick poll. It's only three questions, and I am going to go ahead and launch it now, if you'll please take that. Amazing, amazing. Looks like everybody's answered, so I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. And let's chat a little bit. Okay, cool. So looks like we have mostly students who are in the 10th or 11th grade. That's great. And we've got a couple parents or guardians of potential applicants in the webinar today. Welcome, welcome. Looks like everybody obviously is interested in creative writing. But ooh, you also have some varied interests outside of creative writing, too. It looks like we've got um, some people interested in design, drama, film and photography, instrumental music, musical theater, visual art, vocal music. You all are some multifaceted artists. All right. And it looks like, okay, about half of you have attended a GSA 101 webinar. The other ones, um, some other, the other half has not yet. We'll get to the GSA 101 webinars here in just a little bit. But great, awesome. Thank you all so much for participating in that poll and dropping your info in the chat. Um, we'll, now that we know a little bit more about you all, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Natalie Thompson. I am the GSA program coordinator. I am a 2015 alum of the program. I actually attended GSA for musical theater. And since then, have been involved um, in a couple summer staff roles. Um, I was an RA and I was an administrative intern prior to joining the team full time this past January. And a big part of my job, and honestly, I think that my favorite part of my job is I am actually um, a team member who heavily monitors and responds to questions um, like in our GSA info inbox and also the GSA helpline. So. Um, if you're calling in or emailing us with questions, I'm likely the person you're talking to. Um, and so I've just loved getting the opportunity to, you know, meet students and the people that support them and um, have been able to help um, people with their applications and, and beyond. So um, now that you know a little bit about me, I am going to turn it over to our panelists tonight. Um, our panelist, his name is Dan Burnett. He is an 
esteemed creative writing faculty member for DSA. Um, and Dan, why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself and your involvement in DSA and you know any roles you play outside the program? Okay, wonderful. Uh, hello, my name is Dan Burnett. Um, I've been teaching in the creative writing program for the last 11 years. Um, I went to GSA in 2003 for creative writing and then was a discipline assistant for a number of years. Uh, it's like a teaching assistant that's part of the program. And then I studied um, arts administration while I was at the University of Kentucky. And I got my master's in playwriting from the new school in New York City. And I've mostly written one person shows toward those around the country, uh, taken them to other countries, published a few books. And um, I'm currently an assistant professor of creative writing at Christian Brothers University in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I live in Memphis and um, yeah, GSA is like a major constant in my life. And it's it's really beautiful to come back to the program and see what people in, are, are writing and creating and and see you know the, the young Kentucky minds and Kentucky writers uh, continue to flourish. So really, really thrilled to, to meet you all and, and potentially see you all this summer. Awesome, thank you, Dan. Alrighty, so today's session, um, we will be chatting with Dan a little bit about what GSA looks like, um, what the GSA application looks like for the creative writing program. There will be time for a Q&A at the end of today's presentation, so feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask your questions. It is easier for us to see your questions if they're in that Q&A feature versus in the chat. Um, so if you can't access the Q&A feature, then feel free to use the chat, but we prefer it in that Q&A so we can have them all in one place. Um, if you're joining us on Zoom, you should be able to review uh, or you'll receive a survey at the end of today's session. This survey kind of helps GSA assess how our recruitment efforts are going, how widespread they are. Um, so it's really helpful to us if you'll take a moment to fill that out once the presentation is over. All righty, so let's jump on in. If you aren't already aware, today's session is part of a larger series of virtual info sessions that we're hosting throughout the fall. Um, and those are for applicants, parents, educators, anybody um, interested in the program. So we hope you'll take advantage of these resources to learn more, ask questions, and connect with the GSA team. Um, so just looking at the timeline here, um, we have had two of our four GSA 101 sessions. These are more general information sessions that kind of give a bird's eye view of the program as a whole versus these art form specific sessions. Um, if you've missed the September and October sessions, that's totally fine. You have more opportunities to attend in November and December. And then also we're recording all of our webinars and they're posted um, in the days following the webinar on YouTube and on our website. Um, on October 5th, we open the application. So um, I know many of you might have already started your application. If you haven't yet, that's totally okay. Um, we open the application on October 5th, and that's also when we released our applicant guides, which we'll go through in this webinar. And we released an application walkthrough video to help people with the accepted portion of the application. Um, so this is one of our art form specific webinars that you see listed there on the bottom. We have already um, hosted ones for instrumental music, dance, musical theater. Those are up on our website and on YouTube, so you can find recordings of those there. And then we'll be hosting um, art form specific webinars for the rest of the art forms over the next couple weeks. So all of you multidisciplinary artists that said you were interested in just more than creative writing, feel free to check those out. They're a great resource for anybody considering um, submitting multiple applications. And also remember that these info sessions are not the only way to get information about the GSA application process. So you can contact GSA with any kind of question at the GSA helpline. It's listed there at the top, 502-566-5192. Or you can email us at gsainfo at kentuckyperformingarts.org. And like I said earlier, there are no scary adults at GSA that are waiting to judge you. Um, we love chatting with our applicants and it's our pleasure and our job um, to help you out. Um, and like I said, I'm the one that you're, uh, you know, might be speaking to or, or another one of my phenomenal colleagues. So really and truly we're, we're all here to support you. Um, follow us on social media as well. You can search our program name to find us on Facebook. And our handle uh, on Instagram is at KYDSA. That's a great place to get some quick updates about the program. All righty, so we're gonna really quickly review some information about the summer program itself um, before we dive into the Creative Writing Applicant Guide. So GSA is a three week, three week residential summer program that takes place on a college campus. We're currently hosted at the University of Kentucky in Lexington. 
So students attend GSA for one of nine art forms, and the program is completely tuition free. The students are immersed in an intense, challenging and exhilarating learning environment in one of nine art forms. And while each student focuses on the one art form they're attending GSA for, interdisciplinary collaboration is a major component of the program. Um, so students are also exposed to and engaged with other art forms other than their own. So we expect to take approximately 512 students uh, spread across two sessions. So um, many, uh, a couple years ago, the uh, program was actually able to double in size, and that was thanks to supplemental funding provided by the Kentucky Department of Education. So just some items of note for you. Um, students must currently be a sophomore or junior in high school to apply for GSA. Uh, we will not ask you for any kind of like GPA, ACT, SAT, PSAT scores um, during the process. And you can apply for up to two art forms, although you will only be attending GSA for one. So um, all of the, the multidisciplinary artists that we learned about in the poll, feel free to submit two applications. You are definitely welcome to. You will only attend GSA for the one art form, though. Um, there's a $35 application fee that's collected just before submitting your application. Um, if you choose to submit a second application, there's an additional $15 fee. Um, for that second application, so it's $50 total for two. Um, students on free or reduced lunch can have this fee completely waived by the click of a button in the application, and that is no questions asked. So if you qualify for free or reduced lunch at school, you can waive the GSA application fee. And while we are thrilled to speak with you about GSA's creative writing program today, and we're confident today's session will be helpful, remember that today's virtual info session will not be 100% comprehensive, and there are some other very important resources that you should utilize to learn more about the program and the application. And all of those are available on our website. It's there at the top, um, www dot Kentucky GSA dot org and Kentucky is not abbreviated it is all spelled out um, so be sure to read the applicant guide for your art form of interest uh, we'll review the applicant guide as part of today's conversation but you should take some time to carefully review that document yourself we'll be reviewing um, we'll be, re be reviewing the parts of the applicant guide in varying degrees of specificity so um, you know we might skim over some other parts um, to give you a little bit more information here so make sure you're taking a look at that in your own time as well as you're crafting your materials. All right, so finishing out our timeline, the GSA 2024 application is due by end of day, January 14th. So that's 10.59, East, or excuse me, 11.59 Eastern time, 10.59 Central. So if you are in the Central time zone, note that you do not have until 11.59, you only have until 10.59, since it'll be 11.59 Eastern. So um, it is due by end of day on that Sunday. Note that that is a Sunday and the GSA office is not staffed on weekends. So that means that Friday, January the 12th is the last day to call or email us with any questions that you have. I'm going to say this and I hope that you hear me clearly. Do not wait until the last minute to upload your application if at all possible. The application system will inherently run really slow as more people submit their application in the final day or two. So do yourself a favor and get your application in nice and early. You don't want to be sitting there go at, you know, 11.59 and 50 seconds going, oh my gosh, is this going to submit in time? You don't want to do that to yourself. We recommend completing your application at least a week in advance of the January 14th deadline if you can. Students will learn if they've advanced to the second and final round of adjudication on February 16th, which is about one month before those final round audition and reviews uh, are going to take place. Those will take place on March 15th and 16th. They are hybrid, which means that some auditions and reviews will take place in person at the University of Kentucky, and some will take place online via Zoom. Full details are in each applicant guide, and we'll briefly go through um, what the final round looks like for creative writing during this webinar. We will announce the GSA class of 2024, as well as alternates placed on the wait list on Friday, April the 12th. And finally, the dates for GSA 2024 are as follows. So session one is going to run from June 9th 
to June 29th, 2024. And session two will run July 7th through July 27th, 2024. So again, session one is going to be June 9th to June 29th. And session two will be July 7th to July 27th. So all students will attend one of the two sessions that I just mentioned. Students are assigned which session they attend and will learn which session they've been accepted to along with the class announcement in April. And though most art forms will take place in both sessions, including creative writing, um, creative writing will be offered in both sessions, but design will only be held in session one and dance will only be held in session two. So if you're interested in either one of those art forms, note that design and dance are only held during one session each, design in session one, dance in session two. But creative writing is offered in both sessions. All righty, so that is just kind of a brief overview of the program. Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen just briefly while I get the applicant guide pulled up. While I do so, Dan, would you mind giving just kind of an overview of the program and what it's like to attend GSA for creative writing? Definitely. Yeah. So the three weeks, at least um, in the years past that we've done it, um, it kind of changes um, every year, especially given that we sometimes have, have different faculties. So we have different opportunities uh, for people to, to learn and, and grow during it. Um, but during the first week, we focus a lot on like generative exercises. So we'll go to the art museum and we'll write about art. We'll uh, do workshops within class. We'll give you like assignments and, and you know, just, you know, write about all kinds of different things. Uh, just to get as much of, of that content out as possible. The second week, we focus a lot on revising. Uh, so taking those initial ideas and crafting those into pieces. And then the third week, what we've done in the past is um, playwriting and, and, and performance. Um, but in the past years, we've kind of exploded this entirely. So last year, we decided that we wanted to, to like blow up the curriculum in the best possible way and see like, well, what, what, what do we want to do? So students actually took a little bit more time to, to create a chat book, which is a, a, a book of, of the book that uh, their work that they've created while they've been in residence. And then they were hand binding those. So they actually got to make the piece themselves instead of actually having that sent off to a printer and then receiving a bunch of copies. So we've actually found like a lot of nice changes that, that happened um, over the course of this, this last year. Um, and we're, we're continuing to, to bring those into the classroom now. Um, but really it's like, we're, we're, we're trying to create a good community of, of artists, take people through the entire process of what it is to, to write and create their pieces, and then find the best home for it, whether that's on the page or on the stage or, or you know, digitally or any other type of, of expression that, that we have. So we're kind of reinventing what we think of as a, as a final product and really focusing on the process of what is it like to be an artist and an artist in a community. Thank you. I actually have um, one of the chat books that was made last summer. Oh my gosh. From oh, one let me go get some. Wow. One second. I have them like in my. my um... I keep this at my desk and I'll just read through it every once in a while and just read oh some of the pieces. Yeah. It's great. So this yeah, this this last year in one of our sessions, uh, we decided to do a collaboration with visual art. So this yeah. was, you know, one of the things that, that Natalie was talking about of, of working with people in different disciplines. And they made a chat book of some of the 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 pieces. So like we we did this kind of like work back and forth where uh, visual art made a collage piece uh, oh based God. off of um, images that that the creative writers like ripped out of magazines and then said like hey i want a visual artist to make something so the visual artists made work and then the creative writers wrote pieces in response to them so then we have this like beautiful collaboration of everything that was was coming together so we we try to think of new things for each program just based on like who's there what do we want to do and what and especially given the students that that we bring into each of the programs uh yeah. you know what is, what is going to be the best way of getting them to explore what it is that they they want to create yeah so cool Awesome. Well, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen just to show you all how to get to um, the applicant guides. If you've never been on our website before, happy to show you around. Let me go ahead. Can you see my screen now? Should see the perfect, the GSA. So this is the GSA homepage. This is what will pull up when you type in www.kentuckygsa.org. Kentucky not um, abbreviated. Oh no, did I just exit out? Oh no, here we go, boom bam, alrighty. 
So um, you'll see this home screen here. And so you can either click here where it says click here to apply for DSA 2024, or you can click up here where it says applicant guides and application portal. So that's where we're gonna go now. So this is the link, um, this is the page that will link you to um, all of the applicant guides, the application portal, the application walkthrough video that I mentioned earlier, as well as some additional resources, um, including like a link to our YouTube channel, link to information about the application timeline and webinars, et cetera, et cetera. So going back up here to the applicant guides where it says start here, um, this is what you're going to want to look at for any of the GSA applications that you're filling out. Um, so you'll click this link here and it'll bring you to this page. So here's what you're gonna see. You'll scroll down and here's all of our applicant guides for all nine of our art forms. So we are going to come up here and open the creative writing, which I already have it open. And this is our beautiful, stunning, wonderful, and amazing 2024 applicant guide for creative writing. Um, so we're gonna go through certain sections of this just to kind of give everybody an idea of um, the application process. And then we'll take some questions. Awesome. So first up here, we've got a program description, which Dan has already kind of given us a bit of an overview about. Um, feel free to read this in your own time. It gives just, um, you know, a little bit of additional information. And then we also have a link to some program photos from this past summer's uh, creative writing classes. Um, so for the preliminary round application, so that is what you're filling out right now that's due in January. Um, this is the first round, first of two rounds of adjudication, and this uh, round is entirely virtual. Um, so you'll submit materials in the section through the online platform accepted, which we've already kind of referenced a couple of times. Um, please note that accepted is not misspelled. Um, there is not a second E in their, um, in their kind of uh, program name. So when you're typing in um, accepted, it is misspelled. Uh, well, it's not misspelled if you don't put in the second E. There we go. Okay. For the preliminary round, you're going to submit the following elements. It'll be two recommendation forms, a personal short essay, a personal question video, You'll answer some art form specific questions and then you'll submit your manuscript. So when we're thinking about the recommendation forms, basically what they are is you'll identify two people to serve as recommenders for you. If you can find two people that can speak to your artistic abilities, great. Um, if you can't, if you don't have, you know, like um, somebody specific, like at your school who's a creative writing teacher or anything like that, we encourage you to look for people in your life that know you as a person, kind of know how you work and how you collaborate with others. Um, people who can speak to your character, to your accountability, or your work ethic. Um, so when you're thinking about who to choose as recommenders, know that you cannot get a recommendation from somebody who's directly related to you. Um, your mom thinks you're amazing and your mom thinks you're great, but she can't serve as one of your GSA recommenders, unfortunately. Uh, but you can choose people like your teachers, school administrators, like your guidance counselor, any kind of like mentors that you have or other people involved in your personal or artistic development. Um, think like a coach, a youth minister, a staff at an organization, if you volunteer anywhere, people like that. Um, so you'll put in the names and email addresses of each of those recommenders and they will receive a recommendation form to fill out for you. It's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't take terribly long. They don't have to write a letter of recommendation. Um, but before submitting your recommenders in information, we strongly encourage you to inform them that you are applying for GSA and ask them if you can list them as a recommender. That way they know the form is coming, they know kind of what GSA is, um, and if they have any questions about GSA, they can reach out to us or you can reach out to us on their behalf. And then also, please, please, please confirm which email address you should list for them. Um, double check that you have the correct spelling. If they're not getting the email at first, sometimes it will go to ju people's junk mail. Um, here's some information um, about what the email will, what email address it will come from, and then what the subject will be. Sometimes it will go to junk or spam. Um, that happens, they can access it from there. And then also if they're not getting the, if it's not in their junk or spam folder, double check the spelling of their email address with them and make sure that it went to the right place. 
if for some reason you accidentally submitted the wrong spelling of an email address, it happens, contact DSA, let us know, and we will be happy to fix that for you. So Dan, what, how do you all use these recommendation forms? What are you looking for in them? How are they helpful to you as an adjudicator? Sure. So the, the, not, I mean, it's not the biggest, it's certainly not the biggest thing. Like we're most interested in what the student is writing and their creative writing sample, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, but this is mostly to get like a better sense of, of the applicant. Like what if sometimes it's like if the writer is not necessarily expressing their ideas pretty clearly, but like maybe they are, um, you know, they're, they're really much more of a talker than it's like, okay, well, like that's, that it gives us a better perspective on, on kind of who this person is and, and what they've, they've gone through in the past. Um, it does, you know, and because it doesn't really, you know, impact us too much in terms of our, our process, uh, because a lot of people, like, you're going to be picking people who are going to be saying good things about you. So we're going to be reading essentially people saying good things about you. So it's really to just get, like get a better sense of, of who this person is. Um, it's not like the old ultimate deciding factor uh, on it. Um, so yeah, just don't, don't fret too much about, about this, but do try to pick somebody who like knows you and not somebody who, you know, is just like, they, they, their title might be really good. I uh, really pick the people who you have a good relationship with, uh, who can give, uh, you know, us a better sense of, of who you are outside of your creative writing. Awesome. Thank you. So two of the other elements that you will be submitting is a personal short essay and a personal question video. So these are the same across all of the um, online art forms. So the personal short essay is 250 words max. Um, I know writers can sometimes be wordy, but we have got to keep it under 250 words. And you're answering um, a question about how can or why the, should the art form you're applying for be of importance to your community or society as a whole. Um, so just, again, getting kind of a window into how you think about art, how you think about your art form. Um, and then the personal question video is a very similar vein. This is 90 seconds max of you speaking on how creative writing is important to you and what your goals for yourself as an artist within creative writing are um, for the future. So these are, there are some um, specifications here and some tips as well about, you know, how to upload these and how best to, um, you know, get them in the application so they're viewable. Um, so I would definitely recommend reading through these. Um, Dan, can you speak a little bit on how you use these elements of the application and how applicants might best formulate their responses here? Yeah, um, try to be as authentic as possible with with doing this. Um, I really like we we use this in in our discipline to really see you know who is this person outside of their work. So the way that I review all the applications is I read the writing sample first, and then once I finish reading the writing sample, I watch the video and read the essay to see like okay who is this person on their own, and it's it's a wonderful surprise sometimes because like sometimes a student may be writing some of like the darkest things within their uh, their writing sample and then they're just like bubbly in their, in their video and it's like whoa who is this person <laughs> so it's it's really it's it's interesting where we just get to see like all right who's the personality and what are they what are they interested in and, and curious about um if it if it goes over 90 seconds like it doesn't you know if you're at 91 seconds it's not going to automatically cut you off uh but like try to try to be concise and clear in in a everything that you're saying and you know just show show yourself um that's the biggest thing in this entire application process is like there's going to be many opportunities throughout your life later in your life where you're going to have to like have probably the button up form of yourself the college essay version of you but it's like this that's not what this is about like we're, we're really trying to make an opportunity where especially you as a creative writer and you're exploring your own imagination and everything that's really fascinating to you it's like show who you are like give yourself the opportunity to just like be like hey this is me and and we're gonna you know be able to have a conversation with you about like okay what is it you want to make and and you know support you in in that journey so come as you are please that's great advice that's great advice for this application and for many other situations in life be i mean we list it every year be open honest and authentic give the adjudicators kind of a little window into who you are um so that they can you know find the best fit for the program. So great, awesome. 
All righty. So those art form specific questions that I mentioned earlier, those are going to be on the application and accepted. Um, so just know that it'll be just kind of about your specific interests within creative writing and kind of your level of access. Um, so this is not like a quiz, it's not scored. There are no right or wrong answers in this section. Um, there's nothing in this section that we're going to see and go, no, you know. Um, so once you're in this portion of the application, again, this is just so that GSA can get more information about you and how you basically kind of have gotten to where you are and the, the resources that you have access to. So we can kind of view you as a person rather than just like just this manuscript in front of us. So we can get information about how this manuscript came to be. Um, and speaking of the manuscript, um, they are going to be, um, it's all kind of one large creative writing category, right? So you can include work in a variety of forms, um, everything from fiction to creative nonfiction, poetry, playwriting, screenwriting, hybrid forms, on and on and on. Um, the, the sky is the limit in terms of form. Um, but we do strongly recommend that you submit complete pieces. And we do discourage submitting excerpts from longer works, um, just so we can kind of see how you bring your work to its kind of complete conclusion from start to end, rather than trying to hop in in the middle and then there not being an ending to it. We don't know how you end things. So, um, Dan, do you have any kind of notes about that? Yeah, that's my that's my main thing is just like try to try to bring your story to some type of conclusion. Now, a lot of people when they when they come to the GSA, like they are thinking about really large stories and like things that are are epic in some sense or novels or wanting to write novels. And you know, it, it's cool that if you have it if you have your scene kind of close in some way where it sets up what the next scene would be so that it, you want your reader to keep reading that's fine to include but you know if if your ending is like and then they woke up then it's like well maybe you have more interesting ideas that you can explore and there are different ways to to resolve what this is going to be but think of like what is what is my actual resolution? Like, what am I really leading to in this in this short writing sample so that you really set yourself up well to tell a whole story and, and take us on a journey um, in the in the times that we're, we're, we're reading your work. Um, with with having excerpts of, of longer pieces, I, I also discourage that because sometimes people will have like a like an excerpt of two longer works i'd rather see one excerpt of one longer work where it's like you're really bringing that to some type of conclusion in the six to eight pages that are um allowed for for this um but i i really discourage having much like shorter fragments of other things unless it's like a flash fiction piece um or something that is very clearly this is going to be brought from a beginning uh through you know a middle and then brought to its, its clear end um yeah it's with with all that um, like really try to put your best work uh, forward or what you feel like is your best work forward. And, and we'll, we'll like, we're, we are generous in the way that we read things. Um, we're really trying to see like, what are the ideas that the pers this person's exploring? How are they expressing those ideas? What are they doing? That might be kind of like inventive and fun and, and different uh, on the page, especially compared to, to their peers. Um, you know, how are, what are, what are they intrigued by? That's, that's more interesting than, you know, some, some like, beautifully written thing that doesn't say much so we're more interested in like what are what are you, what are you wrestling with in, in your mind and that thing can be joy um you know it, it doesn't have to be you know anything that's like necessarily dark that you have to write and in fact it's like you know or write what you want to write about um really show like what are you curious about what are you interested in and you know, take us take us on a journey. That's the the main thing. Is you know, the journey needs to go somewhere clear, or at least set up what the next part of the journey is going to be. Um, yeah, but just also have fun with it. Have fun on the page. That's the that's there's plenty of times to be serious. So <laughs> <laughs> just enjoy yourself as you're doing it. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. So getting into kind of a little bit like nitty gritty kind of formatting guidelines, there are some specific ones that we want you to follow when submitting your manuscript for GSA. So first and foremost, all manuscripts must be typed. 
Um, so just make sure that you are using um, any kind of word processing software that you have access to to type those manuscripts up. In terms of spacing, for prose sections, you should double space those. Um, however, for poetry, screenwriting, or playwriting, um, go ahead and single space those sections. Uh, for the margins, make sure they are one inch on all sides. And for font, Times New Roman, Arial, or Courier, just because they are some of the most readable fonts. And we want to make sure that you're not, you know, submitting something to Wingdings. Love Wingdings, but it's, it's not readable. <laughs> Uh, in, also, in terms of font, go ahead and make sure your font size is 12, um, just a standard kind of font size, standard font, standard font size, standard margins um, is what we're looking for. In terms of page count, six to seven pages is kind of the, the length. Um, you don't need to put page breaks in between your pieces, so if you write a haiku, the haiku does not need to be the only thing on the page. Um, you can... Um, include the title of the next piece just underneath that haiku and in terms of titles you can feel free to center align and underline those titles just so that it's clear and readable um, but but you know in terms of going from piece to piece you do not have to start each piece on a new page um, if your last piece doesn't fill the whole page so um, when you're submitting the file format for your manuscript should be either a pdf a doc, a docx, or an RTF, and that's for like in terms of like accepted processing, making sure that what you upload is going to be openable by the adjudicators. So it's just making sure your work is readable by anybody who's going to log in and look at and uh, take a look at it with in terms of adjudication. So do you have to follow these formatting guidelines as closely as, closely as you can? If you have any questions about formatting, feel free to give us a shout, um, like via email or um, via phone, and we'll be happy to help you out. And um, this is a, a sentence that I wish I could shout from the rooftops. Please know that we would rather read any manuscript over no manuscript. Something that I always enjoy saying to people who are on the fence about applying for GSA is, the only way you can guarantee that you're not going to get in is by not applying. And the only way you can guarantee that, you know, they're not going to, um, you know, allow you admit into creative writing is by not uploading a manuscript. So we would rather read any manuscript than no manuscript at all. So, Dan, do you have anything you want to add about these formatting guidelines? Definitely. So, and also to just follow up on what I had said previously about like, bring your, your works to completion, don't leave us on a cliffhanger. If that's how you end it, that's how you end it. Like I'd rather read it than not read it. So please, please, you know, don't don't let my don't let anything that I'm saying as an encouragement be like a hard and fast rule. Like I would much rather read the the work that you submit over not reading any of your work at all. So please, um, please be able to do that. And the reason why these these formatting guidelines are as they are, like they seem kind of strict. They're kind of default when you open up a new Word document and you're creating something in there, except. There's a different default font, uh, Cambria, which I'm not particularly fond of. I don't know why. I, anyway, I'm, I'm going to I'm not going to divert and talk about a typeface I don't like, um, but uh, we'll save that for later if that's a question. <laughs> um, but it's really to give people at, like everyone like the same amount of space to express their ideas. So within prose, like typically it's, it's starting from the beginning of the line, going through all the way to the, the very end of that line. And you have paragraphs that are that are within there. The formatting for poetry and for playwriting is set up in the way that it is because you're, the, the amount of space and what you're expressing in those, in those pieces doesn't take up as much space. There does need to be a little bit more a kind of white space on the page to, to write within those forms. So that's the reason why prose should be double spaced and everything else would be uh, single spaced. If you're working with some type of hybrid form by chance, if this is something that you have like thrown yourself into and gotten really curious about, um, do whatever spacing feels right. Like if it feels like it should be double spaced, great. If it feels like it should be single spaced, okay, cool. And and yeah, just just follow those those six to seven pages. If it happens to be a line over onto the eighth page, that's fine. If it happens to be like five and I'm really trying to get to six, it's okay. Like just please submit over not submitting. Awesome. Great. Great advice. All right. So we're going to briefly review final round for creative writing. Um, so again, these are going to take this final round review will take place in March. Um, the 
final round reviews for creative writing are virtual. So you, just as a note, you'll only be scheduled for one of those two days. It says March 15th and 16th. Your time slot will only be on one of those two days. Um, so the final round for creative writing includes a pre-review questionnaire. Um, think it's, it's very similar to the art form specific questions that you're filling out on accepted in this first part of the application. Again, it's just um, giving the adjudicators a little more of a window into who you are. And um, it could also be used to customize some questions in your interview. Because the other, another part of the um, creative writing final round is going to be a virtual group interview. So it will be a group of finalists. Um, interviewing with uh, some of the adjudicators, and it'll be, um, uh, it, what would you say, Dan? It's generally more of a conversation than like a formal job interview. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to be, yeah, you'll be talking with each other, talking with us, just like having a group conversation. Um, we will ask you all questions individually. Everyone's going to be asked the same questions and everyone will give in, be given space to answer. But we're really curious, like, too, how do you interact with other people in this kind of group environment? Um, are you listening to your peers? Are you kind of not? Like, it's, you know, pay attention to other people. We're, we're really paying attention to that. Uh, as yep. we, we go through. And also, you know, how do you present yourself? How do you answer the questions that we have for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Cool. And then the last part is going to be a post-interview free write. Um, so after the interview, you'll um, have 45 minutes of self-guided time to complete a free writing exercise. So the submission information for those and the prompt will be given in the interview. So just note that if you do um, get invited to move on to the final round review, make sure you block off enough time for your interview and then for your post-interview free write. Because it has to happen that 45 minutes afterwards. So um, yeah, any, any notes on that, Dan? With the free write at the very end, it's nothing you can prepare for. So just know that like, just also come as you are, do the prompt, enjoy yourself, and then we'll, we'll let you know our decisions. Perfect, awesome. Alrighty, so moving on, um, we do list some criteria here. Um, this is just to kind of give you an idea of how the adjudicators are evaluating your application and the work that you submit and kind of what they're using and what they're thinking about generally when um, they are, when they're looking at your application. So there is um, a couple of criteria that's just for prose, playwriting, and screenwriting submissions. And then there is separate poetry criteria um, and then down here, there are going to be create, uh, criteria for all creative writing applicants. So Dan, um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about each of, you know, these kind of, uh, kind of areas and um, kind of what you're looking for and how they can use the criteria to kind of hone their materials, submit the best possible materials? Yeah, it's helpful to look at this rubric as a way of, of guiding yourself as you're, you're looking through your piece. So think about the structure, think about the language, think about the character development, uh, because the, those are going to be the consistent things that the adjudicator and the adjudicator is going to be looking at for, for all these, these candidates. We also recognize there are many things within your manuscript that don't fit in necessarily with any of these categories. Like what, how, like how well is this person engaging with their ideas uh, and how are, well are they expressing their ideas? That there is like some type of, you know, unquantifiable aspect to, to your creative writing. Um, so please know that like we're, we're taking your whole submission and you as an as a whole applicant into consideration based on everything that you're presenting to us that you know this is to allow us to be as consistent as possible with more more objective things and then allow you know everything that is subjective about you know interacting with with your work and and seeing how you're developing what access you've had to, to create writing in the past looking at the wholeness of who you are and what you've you've been able to, to create at this point in your life you know, we're, we're just, we're doing this so that we also have a way of evaluating all the applicants together. Um, so it's like what, in terms of like their eventual manuscript score, we're looking at that in terms of, you know, many different factors, the, the things that we just described about access and, and demographics and location and, and um, you know, where, where they are in the state, what they, what they may be able to, to, to work on uh, and, and have access to. Um, but it's also just to be able to have some type of consistency in terms of us uh, moving people forward. We typically in creative writing tend to interview more people than not. Um, so, you know, we'll, we, we, we 
if you get to the interview process, it's like, there's very much like, you know, we, we saw that there's something in your work that we wanted to like meet you in person and be able to bring you to the second round. If you also, if you happen to not get an interview, that's not a judgment against you at all. It's like, also, we tend to max out the number of interview spots that we have because we want to talk to, to many of the, the creative writers. So it's just a, it's also a numbers thing in terms of capacity, you know, how much, how much time do we have and, and how many people can we feasibly see and also remember when it comes to being able to make these decisions. So we're, we're paying attention to you throughout the entire process. Then there's just some rubrics in the way to make sure that we're paying to be paying attention to all applicants in an even way. Also, just for context, I meant to mention this earlier. So creative writing generally accepts um, about 28 students per session, and that's across two sessions. So just under 60 students for the whole summer. Um, so just so you know, that's kind of um, the numbers that you're looking at. Although, or, um, I'm sorry, student spots do fluctuate, like art form, uh, like how, how many students are in an art form can fluctuate depending on um, kind of the level of interest we see in an art form. So just for context, just so you have that information, um, yeah, just under 60 for uh, the whole summer. All righty. So next in the applicant guide, we do have a little tip section. Um, I definitely recommend reading through these. Some of them are a little more general, but others are, you know, to help you prepare not only for this initial application, but also for, um, you know, the final round if you're invited uh, to advance to that. So Dan, do you have any like, maybe like two or three big picture tips that you would want to give to applicants? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing that I would recommend, and I recommend this to every writer, no matter what, is read your work out loud. Uh, because there are going to be things that you will find in your work by reading it out loud that you cannot find if you're just reading it, um, you know, on the page. Uh, like really put your put your voice in in your words and see you know what what is the rhythm of this feel like um, what does it it sound like uh, to to say these words and you may find that there's things that you can revise that you would not be able to to revise just by looking at it so read your work out loud um, it's it's one thing that I I like yeah do it just do it <laughs> um, and then also you know read uh, i mean you're you're probably like all readers in some way but like read things that you don't like reading too like don't like just don't read don't only read things that you like also find stuff that you don't like and then determine why you don't like these things and what do you not like about a certain style or genre or, or anything like you know maybe the things that you turn your nose up at are like mm, maybe this is going to be kind of fun maybe maybe i'm resistant to this because it's actually what i secretly want to write and it might be really Kind of fun uh, to do that. Um, like try, like aim, aim against writing in cliches, but like don't be afraid of them because there might be something that would be new to discover in that. Um, so yeah, don't encourage people to like you know write hackneyed cliched things, but like there's something in there. Maybe there's something you can make fresh in that. And um, that's three. So yeah, yeah, that's that's three for now. So maybe in the in the Perfect. Q and A we'll have a little bit more. Perfect. Awesome. All righty. So after that tip section, we have uh, a copy of our application timeline and the deadlines. We already kind of went all through, uh, through this information at the beginning, um, but if you need a refresher, it is here in the applicant guide. And then down at the bottom, we have our contact information. So um, we do also list the contact information for the accepted help desk if you're having like a technical issue with accepted the platform versus like a, a um, content or requirement of the application question. Um, so if you're having any technical support, if you need any technical support, contact accepted. If you need any support with content or the requirements of, of the application, um, go ahead and um, contact us at GSA. Um, so it lists our office hours. We are open Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern time. And then um, the GSA info inbox and the GSA helpline um, information is listed there. Awesome. So that is the entirety of the Creative Writing Applicant Guide. It um, The applicant guides do have a lot of information in them. They're very helpful. I highly, highly, highly recommend, again, taking some time to go through this on your own as well, because there are certain sections that we just kind of gloss over. So um, it's very, very, uh, it's full of, chock full of great information. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and we are going to move into the Q&A portion. 
Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to utilize that Q&A feature. Um, like I said, that is the most helpful way for us to be able to see your questions. But if you're struggling to get to it, we can also, you can also drop them in the chat. So we do already have one question. Uh, Aubrey asks, if your piece is shorter than six to eight pages, should, should you submit more than one piece for your manuscript? Yes, aim to. Um, yeah, like we we'd like to see a, at least six pages. So um, please please do that. Perfect. Awesome. Alrighty, I think people are getting their questions in now. If anybody has any, while oh, there's typing... a, something oh, else that I, I wanted to just add on to that, um, we've gotten questions in the past about people writing fan fiction and if fan fiction is is allowed. Um, I remember there was this one like I this was years ago when I, I was like, no, nah, I don't really think that fan fiction is is the thing to do. And then a student brought a fan fiction piece to me that I didn't know was fan fiction because she just changed the names. And I was like, this is really, really good. Like, what was the inspiration for this? And she was like, One Direction. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, <laughs> this, is, this is hilarious that I, I realized as a result of that, that um, people who are, if you're writing fan fiction, you probably really know your characters and your story and your world really well. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to submit fan fiction. Um, so I just wanted to, to put that out there that I have been wrong. And, you know, as I said earlier, like don't turn your nose up to things. And it's like, maybe I need to write fan fiction because I have been resistant to it. So I love uh, that. yeah, just, uh, yeah. So let someone, yourself be surprised. So that's the big thing. Let yourself be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. As someone who had a very intense direction, one direction phase, ah! I almost wish I could read that piece. <laughs> I was devoted. <laughs> I was a Nile girl, by it's the fantastic. way. It was fantastic. I'm like, this yep. is, you know, your characters. It's so yeah. good. Yep. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Okay. So we're getting some more questions in here. Good. Yay. All Hello. Right. Riley is asking, is it better to have as many different types of writing as you can in the manuscript or just a few longer ones? I'm assuming she means like of similar style. Hmm. Go with what you think is the strongest work. And, mm. and I guess, yeah, don't, don't pay too much attention to the form. Um, yeah, just put in what you think your best work is. So yeah, Good. as Nikki Fenny once, once said, and I heard her say, uh, whatever form it takes is the form it takes. So just put your best work forward. Okay. So don't feel like you have to have like one poetry piece, one oh. piece of prose, one screen. Great. Oh. Awesome. Sometimes when, when people do that, like they, they, they may actually be kind of hindering themselves um, when they think that they're helping themselves. When it's like, oh, your your prose is really interesting. I really like that story. And then it was just like two poems that are like, what are, what's going on here? Like, yeah. like maybe they're doing it because it's like, well, I just want to show my my range and what I'm able to do. But it's like, well, you know, like put put your best work forward or like what you think is your best work. Cool. Um, let's see. Mason is asking, does any piece need to be an MLA format, like putting your name and date in the upper left corner, putting last name and page number in the upper right corner, any of those kind of special formatting rules, should they follow no. in their manuscript? No. Um, your, your, the way that it's, it's in the application system, like we just see the PDF file, so it's automatically attached to your application record. So there's no kind of uh, additional information that you need to put on your manuscript other than the work itself. Perfect. Um, let's see, Addison is asking, uh, if I have an interesting chapter from my novel manuscript, should I not submit it for the application? If it's just like one chapter from a novel? Oh, I mean, submit it. Like, does it, does it bring itself to its own type of conclusion? Um, mm -hmm. like ask yourself that and then, yeah, I mean, submit that. It may also be helpful to like have some brief contextualizing where it's like, this is what happens before, like you put that in italics and then jump into the chapter and just like give us a sense of where this rests in a larger piece. Um, so that's an option that you could you could take as well. Um, but really try to try to bring it to some type of conclusion. Cool. Yeah, Maya is asking um, a somewhat of a similar question. She says, what counts as an excerpt rather than just a scene? Hmm. I mean, they're both pretty similar. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, yeah. a scene, like a scene really, I mean, they, they both should be complete in some way. Um, yeah. But a scene is, yeah, I would, yeah. 
what do you see as a difference just as a follow-up to, to that that person uh, yeah. if they could just add to the chat like what yeah what do you what do you see as the differences between that because i'd love to just see what else you might have to say cool awesome mm -hmm. yeah so the biggest thing biggest takeaway is making sure it comes to a conclusion bringing it to a conclusion so we can we're not left hanging anywhere yeah or or sets it up so that we want to keep reading more that's a that's even better <laughs> cool. cool. Um, so we got another question. This one is about the final round. Um, so the question is, what happens if you don't finish your free write in the 45 minutes? That's fine. Just as long as you submit it, then that'll be be okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes people need um, additional accommodations and like they need double time or they need time and a half and like that's that's fine. We we make those for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. If Just you have, be sure to if, submit. So. Yes. Yes, if you have like a like an accommodation like through your school or anything or you need additional time, um, just reach out to the program uh, prior to the final round, preferably, and um, we'll chat with the adjudicators and make sure that we can make that accommodation for you. So, okay. Oh, we got Maya in the chat. I'm not sure what I consider the difference between an excerpt and a scene. I think a scene maybe has less of a cliffhanger. I think it depends on the person. I think everyone will see it differently. Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, like some more. Yeah, we've got a couple more questions and then um, we got to start wrapping up here in just a minute. Uh, but Michaela's asking, does each piece I have to I submit have to be a similar? Let me start again. Does each piece I submit have to be similar in theme or can I write on as many different things as I want? Write on as many different themes as you want. Yeah. Yeah. Bring them all. Yeah. We'd love to love to see them. Okay, so here's a question from somebody who applied last year. Um, is it okay if I reuse themes or ideas or even stories that I wrote last year for DSA, or should I write all new stories? Write all new stuff. You could stay on the same themes and characters and, and everything uh, that you had created, but please submit brand new work. Mm -hmm. And I also really love one of, one of the things that I've found very interesting, even like in this kind of preliminary part of the application process, um, where we're still pretty early is I, you know, have seen a couple of reapplications and seeing the growth, just the difference one year can make. And you want to show that off. You want to show that, you know, you might not be the same writer that you were a year ago. So um, yeah, it's, it's been really, really fun to see. And, and I think it's really great to show that off. Definitely. And especially like, you know, people, I, I was, I was checking the creative writing submissions last year, like day by day, leading up to the deadline. So many people submitted the last minute. So it's like, I mean, like discourage it, but especially like give yourself a deadline of, of a week, like try to submit it earlier. Um, yeah. But it's also like your interests and in your writing may change between now and the deadline. So mm -hmm. you know, keep writing, keep, you know, create, creating new things and seeing what, what newness is going to, to come for you. Um, but yeah, I also, I discourage people submitting, um, the same work that they submitted last year because it's, because we want to see that type of growth. So we yeah. may, you know, the, the same adjudicator may read the same, uh, the same applicants work and they will be curious, like, why did, why, like, what, what happened this last year? Why didn't yeah. you write something new and submit something new? So. Yeah. But I also, you know, you know, you like, you like things that you write, you like the, the things that you've spent a lot of time on. And yeah, but just try to see what new thing you make is going to give you that same type of uh, joy and, and satisfaction. Yep. Alrighty, we'll take this last question from Addison. Um, so this is, let's see, she, uh, Addison says, uh, I keep hearing questions suggesting multiple pieces. Do we submit more than one manuscript or are they just asking about multiple pieces into the six to seven pages? So it's one manuscript. So if you have multiple pieces, you're putting them in that same six to seven pages, you're not submitting, you know, one piece separate from another piece. So it should all be in one document. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And with the, um, so there was a, a something that we had said about um, you don't have to start a new page uh, with every additional piece. Uh, if you want to do that, you can. So if you feel like that this poem needs to exist on its own page and I don't want to have, you know, it, it bleeding into another poem, then, you know, that's fine. Like set up your set up your page how you wish. But a lot of people are like, do I have to start it on a new page or can I continue? And it's like, you can continue. Yeah, yeah, perfect. 
I have more time if there's are more questions. So I don't, but yeah. I also want to be mindful of, of your time. So yeah. Yeah. Any last minute questions from anybody? While they're while they're typing them in, I'll go ahead and, and ask um, a question to you, Dan, a bit more of a general question. Do you have any final words to any young artists that might be watching today or oh, yeah. um, any any last nuggets of wisdom you would like to impart upon these lovely participants? Yes, definitely. Um, like one, be gentle with yourselves. Please be gentle with yourselves. Um, and the biggest thing being like GSA is a wonderful opportunity and it is a great program in the state of Kentucky. But knowing that it is only one program of many different things that are available in the world, there are many different paths that people will take. Sometimes people will develop as writers within college or even later or even much, much later in their lives. Maybe they're you know, they'll do other jobs and then suddenly at 40 realize, I want to write novels. Like, you know, you can do that and win the Nobel Prize. So that happens. Um, but also, like, don't let getting into GSA or not getting into GSA decide anything for you. Um, the biggest thing that we teach at the program is to make your own opportunities, to follow your own voice, to craft your own direction, and to create your own opportunities. And you can do that without going to GSA. Um, so while it's a really great opportunity and I encourage people to apply and to attend and, you know, we're going to have a great time, um, don't let not get into the program be a judgment of against you. It's simply like we are lucky that we have now two classes and two sessions that we're able to, to you know, have have students. In past years, it was only one. So we were only able to take 28 writers from the state. And we're trying to make this accessible to many people also who may not have had any type of access to this before. Um, when I applied in 2003 for creative writing, one of my friends from high school also applied. I got in, she didn't, and she decided to stop writing. So please don't rob the world or yourself of your voice. So um, continue to write, create, and become whoever you want to be because look at the world what yep. better time to do it than now because who knows how much time we all have yep the world needs artists and that artist is you and one of my favorite things that um, we mentioned this in gsa 101 and we kind of we say it all the time you know gsa is great it's awesome it is not the be-all end-all of high school art in kentucky and DSA is great, but like you are even greater as an artist, as a human being, as somebody creating in this world that we live in. So I think that's great advice, Dan. Thank you very, very much. I don't see any other questions. Oh, as I say that, we get one more question. Wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the timing, the timing. <laughs> it's perfect timing. Um, all right. Do you need to separate your poems and prose, or can you just follow a short story with a poem? You can follow a short story with a poem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put them all in there. Awesome. All righty. So I think, unless it's going to prove me wrong again, I think that might be all the questions that we have tonight. If you have any questions past this um, webinar, like I said, feel free to send them our way. You're going to be talking to me or you're going to be talking to one of the other lovely people that I work with who are some of the best humans I know. Um, so yeah, feel free to send them our way and we'll be happy to help. Um, other than that, Dan, any other parting words past those lovely parting words you offered just like literally 30 seconds ago? Have fun with it. Um, enjoy yourselves. Uh, I would much rather read your work than not read your work. So please, mm -hmm. uh, please write and submit and do so before the deadline because I don't think there's any extension. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, have, fun. have fun perfect all right y'all well thank you so much for attending tonight's webinar again please fill out the survey that's going to be um coming to you here in just a few minutes after we end it is very very helpful information for us but um we hope you enjoy the application process and we can't wait to see your work um so have a great rest of your night and again let us know if you have any questions and we can't wait to see your application all right. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you all for participating. Goodbye. Oh, awesome.